Among the busy landscape of dive watches, there's a mix of luxury icons, affordable darlings, and enthusiast niche picks. Yet if you were to line them all up simply by their popularity and mass market awareness, the Tag Heuer Aqua Racer would be at the extreme end of the spectrum, being a watch that many are familiar with. Now this might be the case, but the obvious question to follow up is, how does it stack up against the competition? And frankly, are they any good for the money? In this video, we look at the 40 millimeter Tag Heuer Aqua Racer 200. So in first discussing the history of Tag Heuer and in turn Heuer, one has a long history to comprehend that dates back to 1860 and is most commonly known for the exploits of the last member of the Heuer family to lead the company, Jack Heuer, with their mid 20th century chronographs inextricably linked to the world of motorsports, including models like the Carrera and Monaco. Yet before the merger with Technique des Avant-Gardes in the 1980s, the early groundwork for what would eventually become the Aqua Racer burgeoned with the creation of a reference 844 in the late 1970s. It was a 42 millimeter dive wash with 200 meters of water resistance. In the decade to follow, the brand introduced the 1000 and 2000 series, watches that by their looks are recognizable precursors for what would come with the Aqua Racer. These watches were among the most mass appealing designs of Tag Heuer during their rapid distribution expansion, especially in places like the United States. To speak to their cultural relevance further, in the 1987 James Bond film, The Living Daylights, Timothy Dalton wore the 1000 series Night Diver with an illuminating dial. At the turn of the 2000s, Tag Heuer sampled with several different takes on what would be their dive watch package of the 21st century, setting in stone their eventual long-standing approach with the Aqua Racer before I would classify myself even as a watch enthusiast, one of my earliest memories of Swiss watches was from this era of Tag Heuer. At the time, they inked a deal with one of the most popular athletes of the 21st century, Tiger Woods, and I can recall seeing many early aqua racers and Formula Ones of this period. And we're just basically scratching the surface here when it comes to the history of the Aqua Racer and the whole lineage of how it came to be. So if you want even more detail, check out the link in the description down below to one of the most comprehensive articles I've seen, maybe the most comprehensive article I've ever seen about the Aqua Racer. It's written by our director of editorial, Mark Bernardo. He did a fantastic job with this piece. So if you want to learn more about the whole history around really dive watches from Tag Heuer, as well as the Aqua Racer, check it out. It'll be in the description down below. But jumping back, the original Aqua Racers have spawned many different iterations over the years, with the current lineup including different case options with their 300 series, different metal options, as well as mechanical or solar quartz powered variants. But the Aqua Racer that I personally like the most in the modern collection is this one. The Aqua Racer 200 classified by its stainless steel bezel, 40 millimeter case, and approachable design that is intended for everyday use. So a big reason for wanting to showcase this version of the Aqua Racer is a result of its mass appealing dimensions. Coming in with a case size of 40 millimeters, a thickness of 11.8 millimeters when measuring at the thickest point, and a lug to lug of 46.6 millimeters. Compared to the traditional 43 millimeter case of the Aqua Racer 300, this piece probably falls in the sweet spot for an everyday style watch, dropping some specification in the water resistance department with 200 meters here for a more compact dimension set that wear relatively true to size, if not slightly smaller. The central case is primarily in a brush finish, including the lug tops, the case sides, and on the elapsed time bezel marked for 60 minutes, which exhibits a radial brush pattern that will glisten slightly in direct light. The only hits of polishing include some detailing on the screw down crown, the facet running the length of the case sides, the bezel edges, and the center links on the bracelet. Speaking of that bracelet, it attaches at 20 millimeter lugs following a pin adjusted three link style tapering slightly and then terminating at a 36 millimeter long dual button release clasp containing three points of micro adjustment that will require your trusty spring bar tool to execute, though is of solid build quality and does the job required. Jumping back to the central case, the 200's bezel is 60 click, featuring slight back play and has solid tactile and audible response. Though an important point, it does not include any luminescence. One step inside the encircling bezel is our view of the dial through a sapphire crystal with what appears to be double anti-reflective coating treatment. Beyond the dimension set, in my opinion, I think this is a very tasteful looking dive watch. Although perhaps incorporating some very safe design approaches, its intended purpose isn't lost on myself and many, being about as mass appealing as you will come across for a watch of this style. Looking at the details, let's first discuss the backdrop, where we are greeted with a blue horizontally lined dial that transitions to a dark blue 
blue, near black, honestly, at those outskirts that contrasts with the white printed minute track at the periphery. A step further inward are the applied aggressively faceted indices with superluminova within that pop with their finish and mirror the same effect as the handset at center. Speaking of Superluminova, we have two colors on display. You have a green shade for the hour markers and the hour hand, and then a blue tint for the minute and second hand. That said, I find that the Superluminova in practice here is not going to be on par with, I would say, for many other dive watch in this price category. At 12, we have the Aqua Racer text sitting above the Tag Heuer logo. And at six o'clock, there is a date window with a color match date wheel sitting right beneath its water resistance rating and the detailed text regarding the automatic caliber on the inside. Underneath the safety of the closed case back that is decorated with the compass marking is what Tag Heuer calls the automatic caliber five, which is brand nomenclature for the base caliber at a 28242. The ETA 28242 is perhaps the most ubiquitous Swiss-made caliber to ever exist, being tested in millions of watches over the decades and is still providing one of the most reliable and easy to service movements the nation has ever produced. The caliber comes with an Etacron regulator, operates at 28,800 vibrations per hour or four hertz, and produces a power reserve of 38 hours off of a single barrel. Given that it is hidden from view and that the movement is industrialized in favor of performance compared to looks, the caliber is about as no nonsense as you will come across and will offer peace of mind to an owner, though not differentiating with exceptional bells and whistles. So now some closing thoughts on the Aqua Racer. So I have discussed the idea of Tag Heuer more generally several times on the channel as a brand that makes solid watches even having splashes of brilliance when they are able to develop modern pieces that align with the principles that made 20th century Hoyer a powerhouse. Given the many changes this brand has underwent in the past several decades, you have some purists that struggle with certain parts of the catalog that are less focused on the Jack Hoyer era. And as much as I can understand this point of view, the fact remains that Tag Hoyer is one of the most well-known watch brands in the world and a gateway for many to Swiss watches and a brand that's really on a roll lately. In the case of the Aqua Racer, I feel it falls in its own position, not falling into some of the more extreme classified buckets. It's not one of the chronograph icons that helped catapult the brand to legendary status, nor is it one of the pieces that Hoyer purists might quickly criticize. This doesn't mean that it doesn't have some issues. Its professional specification in the loom department is lackluster for a dive watch, and its movement is not going to be class leading for the price. Further, its biggest challenge is the competition from other great Swiss brands like Tudor, Longines, and Oris, just to name a few. That said, for under $3,000, it is a well-finished, versatile dive watch that I personally like the looks and size of. And based on its worldwide popularity, it appears I'm not alone in that sentiment. But all right, guys, that's all we have for this video and my take on the Tag Heuer Aqua Racer 200. Love to see some more comments down below about this one. I know it's a very popular watch. There's probably many owners out there that are watching this video as well as people maybe considering it or have considered it in the past. So leave some comments. What's your take on this piece? Do you like it? Do you not like it? What are some of the thought process that you know kind of comes to mind for you uh, when you were maybe buying this watch or considering it amongst many others? Also, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon. Really do appreciate that. Also check out teddyballister.com, full authorized dealer of 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and a full factor warranty for all the products that we offer. And if you're ever in the area, come to our new boutique in Cleveland, Ohio. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.